Okay, good afternoon, gentlemen. Thanks for, for all being here. Uh, I'm gonna introduce everybody here just so people who are uh, just seeing this for the first time uh, or who don't exactly know who I am or any of you gentlemen, I'm just gonna do a quick brief introduction. So um, we have uh, Adam, if you could just wave real quick, Adam Skelly. Um, he uh, owns or owned Adamson Barbecue. And in November, 2020, he defied lockdown restrictions by refusing to close the doors to his restaurant. His case is currently waiting to be refiled. So um, we're gonna hear about this case in a minute. Um, and then we have Chris uh, Weisdorf. Just do a quick uh, quick wave, Chris, so everyone knows who you are. Uh, Chris Weisdorf is the legal advisor to Adam's uh, legal team. He's also been instrumental with helping so many Canadians with his uh, Know Your Rights seminars. And I gotta say, Adam, your friend there, Chris, I mean, he's become a local celebrity here in the Windsor-Essex area. Um, he's like a beacon of hope, actually, to uh, so many people here in Windsor-Essex that have found themselves in a similar situation uh, as yourself. Country's lucky to have Chris around helping us out. Incredibly lucky. Like, I can't believe his name has gone like wildfire all over social media. I see his name everywhere. So yeah, he's a, he's definitely a good man. You got a good friend there. And um, Greg, there's Greg Moore. Uh, he's our local and very vocal activist who caught the attention of Chris Weisdorf uh, with his now viral U.S.-Canada border crossings in which he schools public health about their everyday violations of the Canadian Bill of Rights and Charter. Um, and then there's myself. My name is Sharon and um, I'm a mom who's just terrified of uh, the world that my child is going to inherit. And so I wouldn't really necessarily say that I'm an activist, but I've I'm definitely been vocal. And having met Greg, who introduced me to Chris, who told us about your case, Adam, that to me signaled, you know, a light bulb in my head. And I was like, this is it. This is the case we need to fund. This is our hope. This is our last chance to win back Ontario, to win back the future for uh, for our children. Freedom, 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 freedom. So, uh, and I just thought to myself, we just, we got to help Adam fight. And so Adam, I don't know if you're aware, but a ton of people here in Windsor, Essex, so many people have united to stand with you, Adam. And I have to say a lot of people are anticipating this interview with much hope. And so I think we're gonna start with, uh, with some questions here. Greg, you can go ahead and start. Okay, so uh, my first question is gonna be for uh, Mr. Adam Skelly. So just tell us who you are really quickly and what is your story and what are you fighting for and why? Sure, well, yeah, I'm, I'm Adam. Uh, I'm a lifelong entrepreneur. Since I was about, I don't know, six years old, I started lemonade stands. I did car detailing out of my uh, parents' driveway. And I ended up uh, starting a catering company, which blossomed into one restaurant, which blossomed into three. So I've always been able to grab life by the horns. And that's the beauty of living in this country. Uh, we have our freedoms and our liberties that allow us to do this, to, to do what fulfills us and to make money while we're doing it. Now, because I'm an entrepreneur, I wasn't so attached to this role of chef or restaurateur. So I was more than happy to sacrifice my restaurant for something that I believed in, which is liberty, sovereignty, freedom. Uh, so I did back in November 2020, I opened up my restaurant. I didn't know how it was going to go. I didn't know anything about the law, but I knew that the lockdowns and this whole COVID hysteria was total BS. Three days later, uh, after uh, some wonderful protesting, I was arrested. My building was unlawfully seized. So the, the fight uh, quickly went into the legal realm where we filed a constitutional question with the help of Chris Weisdorf. Six PhD experts who came on the case, they all uh, wrote testimonies saying that uh, there was no efficacy to lockdowns, that asymptomatic transmission wasn't really happening at all, that there's no cost benefit analysis ever done uh, in regards to lockdowns. They only cross-examined one of the six experts, and that was Brian Bridal. And he wrecked, he destroyed them. It was it was an absolute bloodbath for the crowd. It was it was horrible. They they looked awful at the end of it. The crown brought one expert, the guy didn't even know the difference between a virus and a disease. Like the guy was a bonehead. He, he didn't know anything. But there was never a decision that the judge made based on the evidence. And the the lawyer on that case, Michael Swinwood, didn't file a notice of application 
with the notice of constitutional question. And it turned out that this was a major flaw. None of us knew anything about it because we weren't lawyers. That's why we hired Michael Swinwood. We submitted all the legal paperwork. We went down a five month process. And then when it got to the hearing, Justice Akbar Ali, the judge presiding over the case, re refused to hear it, said she didn't have jurisdiction because my lawyer didn't file one piece of paperwork. And frankly, there's a deadline. By the end of the year, we have to refile. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's time. It's time for us to take action, get these expert uh, testimonies heard in the courts, and hopefully get the courts to set some precedent about these lockdowns and unlawful restrictions. I guess the next question would be like, why is your challenge so important? This is an important challenge because it already has some public attention behind it. Mm -hmm. There's already like over a thousand pages of reports from these experts and a well-crafted constitutional question. Adam was literally the first person in the history of North America to be arrested for violating a public health order. We're challenging the entire act or a good chunk of the reopening Ontario act. And, and no one else has done that. And so if we, if we go away, when, it, when is someone going to actually challenge the act? Simply no one else is doing it. There is no one else who's done it. There's no one else who has the evidence before the court. And there's no one else who is determined to see it as, uh, through as much as Adam is. So it's, it's ready to go. It's ready to submit. Now, a new lawyer will be taking this over. They will obviously incur expenses. Uh, going through the court procedure, uh, but it's it's mostly done. That's a, a big benefit to this challenge. What what really worries me is that you know if we if we miss the deadline, then all the evidence that we submitted, all of that evidence, that 1,200 pages of evidence, is gone. But as I said, we are very confident that our evidence will hold up because there's another case that that I advised on. Um, you know, uh, it's a union challenge against the Sinai Health System. And there, Dr. Bridal, who was an expert, expert number six in our in our case, yeah. the government um, did not attempt to refute him at all. They, they had the head of the science table and he, he could not refute Dr. Bridal at all. He simply said, I disagree. That I, yeah, disagree. See, that, that, I disagree. Yeah, I would think the government is terrified of Adam's case then. They're, being they're terrified of Adam's case and any challenge that actually goes to court with evidence which is irrefutable okay very good so yeah I, I, we can sense the urgency go ahead greg I, I, okay so uh, people have asked me and i'm kind of curious myself i've talked to chris but i wouldn't hear from i think people want to hear from adam as to what happened to the three hundred thousand dollars that was yes. raised uh in the past and why should we give more money to this um to this cause yeah, for sure. Yeah, 350000 raised. Uh, that was massive. It was never a crowdfunding that I set up. I got out of jail and it was all sitting there in an account. It was unreal. So I felt really blessed to, you know, be, be put in. So many people would give me the responsibility to take that on, right? But I had no idea what I was doing. I knew nothing about the law. I've been through a lot of lawyers. So the first one was a, uh, he was my corporate lawyer and he did all like the business registrations and my taxes for my for my corporation. And he told me, yeah, Adam, put it in trust with me. We'll hold on to it. We'll take care of it for you. And his first bill was like $80,000. They were there for a couple of days at the restaurant. They, they saw the big pot of gold. They showed up and they billed, you know, $550, $600 an hour for the couple of days that they were there. They filed a thing or two, very small stuff. And I ended up stuck with this bill of like, it was over $80,000 for basically the first week and a half, two weeks. The next one was Michael Swinwood. And he said, uh, it's going to cost sixty dollars to $80,000 to run the notice of constitutional question. And then plus the expert fees. So I sent him $91,000. He did the constitutional question. And about a week before the hearing, he said, Adam, I need another thirty. dollars I'm going, no, nah, I'm not giving you 30, man. They, you, you said this is how much it's going to cost. And he said, I really need more. I ended up giving him another 10. So I brought up to $101,000. And then after the hearing, we found out that he didn't pay at least half the experts. He left like 20 grand outstanding. So Swinwood took, billed $101,000, paid out maybe $10,000 to the experts, took the rest, bought a place in Peru. And, uh, and he also offered to do an appeal, but we couldn't see eye to eye on the strategy for that. 
uh, he, he was on an island uh, with his opinion of how that we should continue that challenge going forward. But as we were coming up to the uh, examinations, we brought on another lawyer called Pradeep Chand. And he took about $45,000 between my criminal POA and civil matters. And he was helpful and he did some of the cross examinations. Then, so this is, we've only been talking about the civil case so far, but I also have a criminal case and I'm on my third lawyer for that. And there's been at least $20,000 go out to different criminal lawyers. Uh, and then there's also my provincial offense matters. And then now I also have to represent myself uh, in a lawsuit from the health board that they're trying to sue me for $187,000. They're trying to recoup the cost of the enforcement for all the police there that week. So anyway, we've got to about 290, uh, maybe almost $300,000 in lawyer's fees so far, and there's 350 in total. So there's about $50,000 remaining in that GoFundMe, and I'm gonna put that up to start this challenge, obviously. that That's where we're at, and on my GoFundMe, I'm gonna be posting an update and actually have all the lawyer's bills on there so that they can see. Um, I got taken advantage of. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, it's uh, the problem with putting a uh, entrepreneur barbecue restaurant owner, a guy who cooks meat in charge of the biggest uh, lockdown legal challenge in the country. When when this happened, uh, when Adam dared defy the narrative and dissented and wanted to engage in discussion, debate things that are critical in a free and democratic society, he engaged in a civil disobedience as is his right. And, and the, the health board had the right to shut him down legally. And they did so illegally. Right, they, so they're, they're writing all of these mandates and policies based on this act. So that's why it's imperative, yes. that's why it's imperative yes. that this act be challenged. Adam's case yes. is the only one doing so, which is what the yes. doctors are saying. It's more of a case stemic than a pandemic. Yes, if, yes. if that happens, then all of that crumbles. All of that goes away. All these mandates, policies, they all go away. And this is why all this is so urgent. And this is why everybody's standing behind Adam. It's for us all. Yes, you yes. win, it's, for, it's a big win for us all. Huge. I'd like to just quick touch on one more thing with Greg's question, because I, I, I really understand the skepticism about donating to me after there was all this, this money and it didn't go anywhere. Um, I'd just like to address that. Th this was brought to my attention, this meeting and this fundraising like three days ago. I wasn't uh, really aware it was happening. Uh, Chris has told me that there's been a new, I'm not sure the structure of it, but some kind of a nonprofit's been set up. I, I actually hope, and I'm pretty sure this is how it's set up, that none of this money's in my hand, my bank account. This is set up in a nonprofit. Well, I'm a board member, but Adam is not a board member. So there's no, there's, there's no one can ever even say that Adam has any say in how the money is spent. So that's an ex excellent uh, explanation, Adam and uh, Chris, and really good job sharing. So I think that pretty much covers almost everything. Uh, is there anything anyone wants to add? Adam has, and Chris, please correct me, six uh, world-renowned doctors. Yeah, we have, we have six experts that have submitted evidence. The first one is Dr. Joel Kettner, He's former Chief Medical Officer of Health for Manitoba. Yes. The second expert is Dr. Douglas Allen. He's a professor of economics at Simon Fraser University. He submitted evidence in cases, in one case in the US, it went straight to the Supreme Court. The, the third expert is uh, Dr. William Matt Briggs. He's a former professor of statistics and biostatistics at Cornell, at Ivy League Cornell, and he's also a co-author of the first book on lockdowns called The Price of Panic, an excellent book. Um, the, the fourth expert is Dr. Gilbert Burdine. He's Harvard Medical and an MIT educated pulmonologist in Texas. He teaches medicine at Texas Tech and he's treated COVID patients. So he has the on the ground experience with COVID. Um, the, the fifth expert is Dr. Harvey Risch. He's a professor of epidemiology at Yale. And he's probably, he's the most well-known in the US. He's done countless interviews um, in the US. He's appeared in newspapers, television, everywhere. Um, and I, when we got him, I, I, I took a flyer. I, I didn't think he would, he would ever even answer an, an email, let alone come on to our case. It was incredible. And then expert number six, at the time, no one knew who he was outside of his his particular field where he is very well known. 
is Dr. Byron Bridal, Professor of Viral Immunology at the University of Guelph. And he's the most well-known in Canada. He's, he's really gone out there. And um, it was after he came onto our case uh, that, 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 that that happened. So th those are six experts and they all represent a particular area. So we have the best group of experts. We are extremely confident of our prospects if the evidence is heard, because we know that they can try to put together a group of experts like we have and they can't win. Our evidence literally is irrefutable. When I saw that the head of the science table for Ontario couldn't refute our evidence, what else could you possibly want? Yes. So if our evidence is heard, there is no question we'll prevail. Like Chris said, if the evidence is heard, it's irrefutable. There's, everybody who's on this side is, is here because we stand in truth. And it's, it's very clear to us that what we're seeing is truth and what the, the other side is saying is lies. You know, I, I think there's a lot of people out there, myself included, that are starting to lose a lot of faith in this legal system. They're learning more about it. They're, they're learning that maybe legal doesn't necessarily mean lawful and that it's really just set up to protect the interests of the government. And we can see that the same judge keeps getting applied to these same cases, right? Akbar Ali has been on every major COVID case. So th there's a lot of funny business happening and it should be exposed it'll wake up a lot more people to the nature of the legal system and maybe how it doesn't have our best interests at heart. So kind of regardless of which outcome we're getting, there is a positive at the end of the road. So, so Justice Act rally has ended up on all of these proceedings, but, but ultimately we, we certainly would not want her to hear a case where she just ruled against an injunction where she, she disappeared 127 pages of Dr. Bridal's report. She tried to attack his credibility. The opposing counsel didn't have a problem with his credibility. So if opposing counsel doesn't have a problem with an expert's credibility, the judge is supposed to shut their mouth. Plainly put. If someone is not impartial, it impugns the entire legal system. And why go to any legal proceedings? It's because of the evidence. The reason why they had Nuremberg is because of the evidence so they couldn't erase what happened. We are going to ram the evidence down their throats in as many legal proceedings as possible, in every legal proceeding, in this one, in the injunction, in the jury challenge, in the auto workers challenge, which we're involved with in Windsor, with everything. We are going to ram the evidence down their throat until they throw up and then we're going to ram it down again, simply put. Dozens of Toronto police officers are standing in between the protesters and the Ford home. They are voicing their support for the owner of Adamson's Barbecue, who for the last three days has been defying the Ontario government's lockdown restrictions on indoor dining. We'll continue to follow this story throughout the show. Adam was just the first one. Now, That's the right. rest of us. We are Adam, you know. Uh, we cannot comply with lawlessness, as Chris has mentioned so many times. We cannot comply with that. Thank you guys so much again. Thank you so much, Adam, for, for taking the time to uh, clarify a lot of things and uh, for, for fighting. You know, uh, you've inspired a lot of us. And um, yeah, so we'll just, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Thank you very Thank much, Thank you. Thanks, We're guys. very grateful. Thank you to everyone. God bless us all. Thank you.